you've just come back from Denver. Um, you were out there with Mike Tech uh, supporting the allotment. So um, how was that? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, it was a really good trip. Uh, we went to the Mile High Horror Film Festival out there. Um, uh, Mike had been previously, I think, uh, at least twice before with with his films. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was a really nice experience. It's a you know compared to like Fright Fest, for example, it's a much much smaller, much more intimate um, film festival. Uh, it's because we were we were on filmmaker passes. Uh, it was weird. We were really actually treated like sort of royalty because we were the the two Brits. And uh, I guess obviously because Mike had been out there previously, he knew them quite well. And um, we were really treated well. But one of, one of the cool things about it was um, a lot of the films that I didn't get to see at Fright Fest this year. Uh, were playing at this, so it was an opportunity to to watch some some films that I wasn't able to catch there, um, plus some new bits and pieces. And of course, you know, we obviously had our uh, one of our short films or one of Mike's short films that I was in um, showcased as well. So yeah, it, it was a great festival, a lot of fun, um, a lot of fun was had. Yeah, I have to say, I I quite enjoy the American festivals. Um, they do treat you very well. I was over in Orlando. Um, I had Blood and Roses shown at the uh, Freak Show Film Festival, which is part of Spooky Empire. Oh, wow. So it was about this time five years ago it was shown there. It was brilliant because you not only did you have the film festival going on, but you had the convention going on. Right. And so I had, I had a pass for both. So that was brilliant i mean it was just a shame i was a poor filmmaker <laughs> with not much money in my pocket i just had enough to get a hotel room <laughs> and uh, get a flight and just live so um i didn't see much of uh, orlando i would love to sort of go to universal studios or something like that but the the prices of tickets just couldn't afford but i had a, I had a, a great time and it is this is the nice thing of being a filmmaker attending festivals is that you know you you are treated really really well and it's it's i know i i i don't know about you but i kind of sometimes find it more enjoyable when you're part of it when you're you know you're actually having your work shown there and you know and you're getting to meet everybody behind the scenes and and sometimes fellow filmmakers yeah no (laughs) absolutely i mean this this one this one we really were treated um as I said, Mike had built up in previous years quite a good rapport with these guys. So uh, he knew, you know, practically everyone there that was r- running it or, or had stands at it or, or whatever. So uh, it was really good. We, we, we definitely got treated well. Um, you know, we were the Brits, so we were a bit of a novelty as well, to, you know, to those guys. And um it was good because I was able, uh, Daniel Myrick was there and I hadn't obviously spoken to him in years. Um, and, you know, I got to have a chat with him. We got to remember Ralph and, and, and you know, have a, have a bit of a chat about things as well. So, uh, yeah, it was good. For, it was good for meeting other people as well. Um, so, yeah. And, and, and actually, Mike, um, I, I'll say Mike and I, but it was really Mike uh, kind of did a a mini documentary while we were out there. Oh yeah, he did mention that. Yeah, uh, it was. It, there's a guy out there that um, a really nice guy got, got on really well with him too. That, uh, that that kind of one of the things he does is he goes to um, film festivals and conventions and whatever, and he either dresses up as Freddy, uh, Jason Voorhees, or Michael Myers. Okay. And he's he's got costumes, you know, of each that he's that he's put together and custom made parts of as well. And uh, he just goes around so that uh, people can have their photographs taken with him. Um, so we got to interview him and film a lot of his process. And uh, you know, I don't want to say too much more about it because the, the I've already seen the the a rough cut of the documentary um, that uh, Mike's put together on that and. Um, you know, it it does, it's quite interesting. It's quite an interesting watch and it works rather well. And uh, I think Mike wants to have it, you know, he's done a few, he's done a few short films. As you know, he and I are working on a feature. 
He's done a music video, so I think he wanted a documentary to add to his filmmaking portfolio and obviously about a subject that he's very interested in as well. So um, so it worked quite nicely. But, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good festival to attend. So, I mean, I think that sort of brings me on to sort of the experience of, of a, you know, having a film shown at, at a film festival or even just a screening. I mean... Do you remember what the um, what was the first film that you had shown at a film festival? Right. Well, I think I mentioned this briefly, in, in which actually led on to a whole podcast about me talking about a feature film that I made. Um, but basically, I had Overpass, um, which was my first short film. That was shown at the Florida Film Festival that same year. But I didn't actually go because I was already working on working on the next film working on the feature so i actually wasn't able to go and experience that which which was a bit of a shame um so it probably wasn't until i got back to the uk that i um actually went to a, a festival where my you know, or, or something that i made was 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 played um and i'm trying to I, i'm racking my brain here trying to think about what, what the first one was um I don't know. I'm sh- you should start on this possibly because I-, I can't think which one it was at the moment. <laughs> well, I've 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 spoken about the first time I had a film uh, screen to an audience, and that was with Firepower at the Lux, and that was um, that was really good. I mean, I I actually I, I was quite nervous because um, I had to introduce the film and then do a Q and A, and this is the first time I ever done it, and. I loved it. <laughs> I really loved it. I enjoyed going up on sc- up on stage and talking about my film and answering people's questions. And for me, I remember when I was a kid at school, I hated the when you had to go up in front of the class and talk about, you know, a subject or, you know, something you'd done over the summer holidays because I always got very I always got ridiculed. Mm-hmm. That was that was the thing. I was I was the kid that when it was their turn to go up the front of the screen, they took the piss out of me and I just really hated doing it. But um, I, I just, I had none of that and it was just great. I mean, and also the fact that even though if you get um, some a question, <laughs> somebody's point of view is a bit weird or not quite, you're thinking, where the hell did you get that from? You know, you can still talk to them on like a, a one-to-one level and kind of, you know, see where they're coming from, if you know what I mean. I was, mm-hmm. I, I really, I didn't really enjoy the, the Q&A stuff. And I think the first film festival, I sort of, you know, I went with a film and I attended, I think might have been actually the one in Orlando, because I think with the short films, they were more, you know, they were screenings. Because mm-hmm. they were short films, you're not, treated you know you're treated as a short filmmaker so it's hello here's your shorts we'll show it now have your little bit and then off you go and that's that's your bit done yeah no very much so i've had several films shown at the portobello film festival and it is literally like because it's all over the place it's not sort of centralized you come you come in you show your film and you you know they go is the filmmaker in the room you stick your hand up and can you come up to the front and we'll, we'll talk about the film for a little bit <laughs> you know and then that's it it's done and you're off you go but the festival continues yeah uh but um no i think it was the one in orlando which was the first one that um really where you felt part of the festival and then after that i did uh i went to cornwall went to the Cornwall Film Festival and I had to say they treated me really well I mean it's the only time it's ever happened where they paid for my train ticket wow they put me up in accommodation and I got free tickets to see some films I mean I wasn't there for the full event they you know as, as soon the next day I had my return ticket and I had to go home and the festival continued but you know I can't complain because you know they, you know, I, I went, I traveled first class. That's the only time I've ever traveled first class on a plane or a train or anything, you know. It's impressive that they went to that length. That's great. Indeed. Um, you know, and because they had spen- um, sponsorship from uh, Great Western uh, Railway, I think that that helps a lot. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure. But but still, no, you're right. It is nice to get through. I mean, I'm I'm... Well, as I'm sure people can tell from these podcasts, I've got no problem at all about talking about films. Um, 
you know, I, I kind of, I prefer to talk about films or my work rather than me personally or anything like that, you know, um, but if ever I'm interviewed or asked to speak about a project that I'm working on or have worked on, um, you know, I'm, I'm that passionate about it that I'm, that I'm more than happy to do it. Um, I think, I think just a general thing though about film festivals, and this is something that I've been notoriously, um, bad at, um, when I've made films and, I think it's something that filmmakers, you, you know, really, really need to consider is, um, you, you know, I've worked on many things where you don't end up seeing a film at the end of it, you know, <laughs> because they, put, yeah. they the filmmakers will put all their money into the production and, you know, they either won't leave any money for post, but it's not even just leaving money for post really if you're going to go into an endeavor that you want to enter into festivals, whether it's a short film or a feature film, and you do want to do the festival circuit or you want to target specific festivals or whatever, it is very important to actually have a line in your budget really to, to cover that because whereas, okay, back in, back in the old days, you had to have a print of your film and that was vastly expensive and whatever, and you don't have to go to those lengths now, but there still are great costs involved in entering a film into a film festival and having the right deliverables for a film festival. But also, if you want to then go along and actually support the film, you know, in this particular case, they they treated you and they they sorted out your travel and accommodation etc but that's not always the case often you'll have to cover that yourself <laughs> it's the only time it's ever happened to me i mean as, as i said i had to pay for my own travel to orlando but as i saw this as an opportunity to sort of be there with the film and also go to orlando and you know see what i mean because americans they love halloween I and mean, the whole month of oh, october yeah. is just dedicated to halloween so it's great to be there because that's when they have that's convention season for horror films i mean october mm -hmm. loads of conventions going on and spooky yeah. empire was really good i mean i got to meet um heather lang camp from nightmare on elm street there fabulous yeah no absolutely i mean i love i love i love halloween and yeah having lived out there yeah, Halloween Horror Nights and, and their conventions and things of that nature, they do so well. So if you're a horror fan and love all that stuff, um, it's definitely the place to be. But um, but yeah, I mean, you, you know, the associated costs of promoting a film and getting it into festivals and then going and supporting the film at festivals and whatever can be, you, you know, as much as if not more than the, the, the budget of the film in the first place <laughs> so um you, you know it is something to consider <laughs> it's it's it can be very expensive i mean uh just to throw a number at you uh i entered uh blood and roses into the edinburgh film festival and this was an early bird price and this is also 2010 or two oh, must yeah 2010 it cost me seventy five pounds to enter the film. Wow! They didn't show it. Ah, okay. And you don't get that back, do you? If they don't show you it, do so... not get that back. No, no. You, it's a submission fee, and you know, and it can go from five pounds to ten pounds to twenty five pounds. And we're the, talking about short films, and in features, it's more. Mm -hmm. And it's just for them to look at it and say yay or nay it's quite heart-wrenching isn't it when you think not only have you put it your is. blood and sweat and tears into getting a film made anyway which is hard enough but then you you pay a you know substantial chunk of change to actually uh <laughs> submit it and then it doesn't get chosen oh my god that is a real yeah kick in the teeth isn't it really I have to say, I would really like to interview somebody who runs a film festival where not only do they charge for submission, but they charge people at the door. Because I want to know where that money goes. You know, because I, I really do feel that paying to submit a film is, I think, is kind of outrageous. Because at the end of the day, if it wasn't for our films, 
they would not have a film festival. I'm not saying that they should pay us, but I think there should that it, it's it's crazy the amount of money that they're making off filmmakers for not showing their films. I think if you're selected, then I'll pay a fee. You select my film, then I'm gonna I'll pay. You know, I'm not paying to have you to select it. I'm paying because it's been selected. You know, it's it's just crazy. I mean, the amount of money, you know, that's just made off our shoulders from our art. Yeah. You know, it's it is. It, I, I, I sometimes I find that bit very untasteful. Yeah. No, I understand what you mean. I mean, you you know, but as I said, you've got the extremes. When you get picked and get treated well. <laughs> But then once you get into that film festival, it is great. Um, I mean, I bumped into a fellow filmmaker in Leeds when I was up there uh, recently, and he was having his feature film shown there at the No Gloss Film Festival. And he had a really good time. He was actually bummed out that he had to go back to work the next day, you know, <laughs> that it was over. Because it is, you're, you get to meet like-minded people. You get to meet other filmmakers. You get to see, you know, films that, you know, may never ever see the light of day. You may that may be the only place you'll see that particular film, and you may never see it again. And you know, and you you get to meet people, and you have a good time. You know, you go out drinking, you have fun. I'm, you know, I made some really good friends out in Orlando, and it kills me every year that I can't go back out there to see it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because we had such a good time. It was such a good experience. Orlando was, and you know, I. As I say, I like going to to festivals. You know, I attend Fright Fest every year, and it's great to see people. And you know, I'm I've had some experience of you know being on the other side of of Fright Fest of having the teaser trailer for Habeas Corpus being shown there. But we weren't. It, it wasn't the same as having a film shown there. Right. No, I understand. Yeah. Clive talked about this where they have like the director's dinner. And they do invite people whose films been shown there to, to attend this dinner. And, um, you know, I unless unless one of our party went to it, <laughs> I don't think we, any of us was invited. But I mean, it was like five of us. But uh, we were just a surprise that happened on the opening night. It was great, you know, just to be to go up on that stage, the Empire. And to be there in front of all those people. Yeah, I was really impressed when I saw you guys do that. You know, I was like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was all ready to prepare to say something. and uh, But unfortunately, it wasn't my show. It was the Paul Davis show. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the only reason why we were picked, because of Paul Davis and the connection he had to the festival. And, and, you know. The fact that his documentary had been shown there and, you know, he had really good, he was really tight with the festival organisers. And I have to say that that is a nice thing when you do know the festival organisers because you can take your film straight to them and say, will you show this? Yeah. And they will either say yes or no. I've had that connection myself. Um, Mark English used to run the Sutton Film Festival and I had a film shown there one year went down really well and then the following years i would go back to him with a new short film and say would you like to show this and he always said yes because i had that contact and it does make a difference if you have that that contact if you know the organizers like mike with the denver you know film festival with uh, is it mile high it is yeah yeah so you've got that connection and it's it, it's it's great yeah well the the film i've just made i'm hoping to uh you know maybe get that in there next year possibly or at least submit it so um yeah <laughs> but i mean you can get in touch with the organizer straight away and it's yeah it's i know other filmmakers are going well that's fucking awful i mean what about my film i mean they they, they you they're, they're picking your film over mine and not even seen mine and yeah i know it, it it's that is that kind of double edged sword where it's like, you know, it, it really helps if you know the organizers because they are more likely to go with the films that they know. Hence why, you know, they always I mean, I've seen stuff, I've seen articles where they say, well, film festivals, they're looking for this. They're looking for celebrities so they can smooth with them. They're looking for, you know, directors who are up and coming. And, you know, also they're looking for themes that fit in with the rest of their festival because 
yeah it's true some some of these festivals have a theme that they don't tell you about and it's just pot luck that your your film just happens to fit into that scheme they have that year and you don't know if the scheme's the same from year to year it's just yeah it's film festivals there really are a law to themselves but uh great fun if you can attend they are absolutely good fun to attend um and you know it's always nice i mean i think when we well, the reason we all make films is, is you know, you need to have your film screened with an audience. I mean, that's the whole point, right? And that's where you can really yeah. tell if a film works or not. It's because if you've got a load of people in a room that don't know you and are watching this, they don't know what they're going to watch. You know, the reaction that you get from them is is, is a pure and true reaction. Um, you know, it's it's not weighted or jaded or anything like that it is what it is and um you, you know i i think uh you know that can be that can be the very rewarding or very uh disappointing i guess depending on the reaction you get but um well exactly i mean you're going to see films that you know very little about because they've not had the advertising yet unless of course they're a film that's coming out the next week i have to i have to say that there is um a, a Film festivals now are being used as like as premieres for their films. So take the London Film Festival that's happening right now as we're recording this. Mm -hmm. They open their opening film was Suffragette, which has just come out the cinema the same week. You know, I remember when they did that uh, in Cannes with um, I think it was The Fifth Element. Mm -hmm. They had it premiered there, and then it was out in cinemas like the following week. When before, if it was shown at a festival, it wasn't going to be coming out for months. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's like everything, and it? it's all sort of sped up, <laughs> process wise and whatever. London Film Festival, I, I've never really attended much. It's, I won't say it's elitist, but it is a bit. But it's the, the problem is you as a festival, you just couldn't attend it all because the the, the tickets cost so much. And so it's why I've never really bothered with it. Yeah. You know, it, it's been going on and I've been, you know, I've been around it. I've been on the, the edges of it. But I've, I've never sort of, you know, it's, it's, I think I've only, so far I've only seen two films at the London Film Festival. One was a boring French film that a friend of mine got a ticket for. And I saw um, Bone Tomahawk uh -huh. uh, yesterday with uh, Kurt Russell, which is great. It, you know, when it comes out, Go and support that film. It's a low budget indie film that really, you know, goes out there with, with its idea. And it's really very good. But um, that's it. I mean, that's all I'm seeing. And that was only because a friend of mine had a spare ticket. Oh, I mean, you can, you know, even not even as a filmmaker, just as a spectator, you can spend an absolute fortune on film festivals, you know, uh, if you're not careful. Um, you know so so often if if you haven't got like a you know lots of available spare available cash or whatever then then you have to be quite um picky and choo pick and choose what you actually go and see i guess you know <laughs> well i that is the case with with the london film festival i mean i'm very lucky because um you, you know of, I, I know you've mentioned elitist which this is going to sound terribly but um you, you know because because i'm actually a, a a voting bafta member um you know our season sort of corresponds and coincides with the uh the london film festival so often um i'm fortunate enough to be able to go to some of those screenings um you know, as a BAFTA member and, 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 you know, see them and attend the Q and A's and things of that nature, which, you know, I, I don't ever think that I don't realize how lucky and, and, and fortunate I am to be in that position. Cause I really am. And it is a privileged position. Definitely. It is, but you do pay a lot of money to be a BAFTA member. It's, it's not once you're in, it's free. You, it's a, it's a yearly membership. Yeah, you, you, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, it is. So it's it's not a case of oh, look at me, I've got free screen. No, there. no, no, but I do, I do, I do definitely get my money's worth. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean that 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 that's a, that's a whole other thing. And I was I was very fortunate, um, timing wise, uh, to have got into BAFTA, and um, 
uh, you, you know, and I, you know, I love what they do for the film in, in, in television industry, but, uh, you, you know, obviously it's not a perfect system. Um, you know, nothing like that is, and it's all very, uh, um, fickle and subjective and, you know, the whole industry is like that. And I think you've just got to go into it <laughs> sort of un understanding those sort of things and, uh, and not getting too sort of bent out of shape about it or too sort of, um, brainwashed by by the bullshit or whatever um but but you know I, I love it because i have a love for films period and to get to see things and particularly you, you know with dvds and stuff you know i like my commentaries well equally with screenings uh i love nothing more than a q a afterwards um you, you know and i i am extremely fortunate throughout the year to be able to go to um lots of uh lots of Q&A screenings, um, which, as I said, I, I do not take any of this for granted. I am uh, eternally grateful that, I, that, I'm, that I'm in that privileged position to, to, to be able to do that. So <laughs> I don't know how we got onto this, but hey, <laughs> I didn't know we were going to talk about this, but yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, the thing about Q&As is you get some really good ones and then you get some really dull ones. I think... I think there's only so many times you can hear how much the budget was and, you know, why, you know, the, the process of how it was made, you know, because it, it was kind of interesting uh, what my girlfriend said about the Q&A for High Rise because it's um, a film that she saw at London Film Festival and um, she said that the person asking the questions were asking very safe questions. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. And I think I think that's very true of like Q and A's like that. I mean the Q and A because you know sometimes you're able to bring a friend and sometimes I'm available to join you for some of these <laughs> <after> screenings. Yeah. <laughs> and of course we went to see um what was it two days in January? Oh yes, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, with um Vigo yeah. Mortison. Yeah. Vigo Mortison. Yeah. And of course, Vigo turned up at the end as a surprise. It was supposed to be a Q and A with the director, but he was there as well. And uh, I have to say, I am I am a fan of Vigo Mortensen as an actor, but his Q and A was so boring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many times do you need to tell the story? We got it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you know, I always try with the whole BAFTA screening things. I I, I try and share the love, if you like. Um, amongst different friends and whatever and uh sort of share it out and invite people whenever i can um but the, the you know, you know the, the thing you have to understand with all of this stuff is is you know often it's all very sycophantic and it is political yeah. and it is um you know it, it is weighted it is um you, you know, it, it's part of the publicity campaign and, and the machine that drives things towards, you know, awards season and therefore, you know, further screenings and sales and, and, and things of that nature. And, uh, you, you, you know, I, I don't want to obviously I don't want to get too sort of controversial about any of this, um, <laughs> you know, on these podcasts. But I think with any of this stuff, you just have to take it for what it is and and uh, yeah. and and be there for the love of it. That you know that that's that's, that's why I go because I I love it. I mean, I have to say, um, I think the Curzon do a very good job with their Q and A. So I, I saw uh, Frank with a Q and A with the director after. Oh yeah, that was really well done. Mm -hmm. But I do love the fact that every screening, there's always one sick of fact, isn't there? Oh, God. There's always that one question that starts with, I love your film. I think it's the best film ever. I think it's wonderful. I thought your use of this was great. Yeah, yeah. Your use of that is wonderful. And as a director who's been on the receiving end of it, you, you do kind of go, yes, this is nice. Where's the question? Yeah. Well, you either <laughs> you get know. that or I notice you get a lot of people that, the question isn't really about the film it's about them so in other words it's more ah, it's more of a yes. statement than a question and you know it's it's oh, an it's yes. an opportunity yeah. to either brag or or pitch in some cases when it's really unsubtle and um yeah yeah I'm, i i have yeah. to admit you know I, i'm i'm very considering i you know i talk a lot and i speak a lot about films uh, i'm very 
unless I really do have a good, intelligent question to ask about something, I tend not to do it otherwise just for the sound of my own voice. I, I tend not to ask many of them unless I've got an absolute corker or it's something that's really bugging me that I want to know then I will ask questions. But otherwise, a lot of this stuff you can you can find out anyway, right? <laughs> On IMDb or whatever. So, you know, it's... Well, yeah, but I mean, it's... I I find that I will ask a question if I've really enjoyed the film. And like yourself, I have that, that sort of nagging question a lot of the time. Otherwise, I will let other people, you know, ask the questions. But you can usually tell if it's been a good screening by the amount of questions you get. I think the best q and I did was at Hartford um, University. And what was so great of it was it, it started off, it didn't start off very well. Um, uh, Virginia Popover, uh, she makeup artist on a lot of my films. Uh, she was studying there and um, she arranged through her student union to have my film shown there. Now, um, the, the, um, special effects guy who did special effects on my film uh brendan lonegan he had been there i think like the month before and they had a big turnout and it went down really well you know it was a big success i was expecting you know oh well this is going to work out well for me too and uh, there was about six people in the audience i'm like shit I'm like, fucking hell, this is, oh, okay, well, okay, roll the, roll the film. <laughs> but what happened was we had a great um, uh, Q&A because it was all one-to-one. -one. So we could, so, you know, there's only six people there, so they're going to ask me questions and I'm going to answer them and I'm having a one-to-one -one conversation with them, you know, to a group of people instead of like a whole room of people who may or may not be interested in what I'm saying. And so that connection was really good. And, you know, at the end of the day, what, as I say, what started off as like, oh, dear, oh God, there's only six people here. It turned out to be, I would ended up talking for, an, you know, 90 minutes. Wow. So okay. As, longer than the film. And, you know, this is another thing as well. If you can get in with film clubs at uni, do, because they're, they're looking for films to show. And you'll, you'll find like there was, there's like a, cult film club or just your normal film club and they're looking for stuff to show so you know if you can have a, you know ask around i mean i've been to um oh I'm trying to think oh uxbridge uxbridge university uh i had done roses shown there and of course it's the same university where they filmed some of clockwork orange in so more connections with Kubrick, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he filmed in this country a lot, so yeah. there's, there's going to be. But, yeah, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it is about getting your film seen. And I think now we have YouTube and stuff, it's it's quite easy to be lazy mm -hmm. and say, well, I'll just put it on YouTube and they can watch it that way. And people who watch YouTube, it's a different kind of thing. YouTube is more akin to TV. So they're looking for sort of more sort of episodic stuff, you know, stuff that you can build on. So they're looking for review shows or they're looking for, you know, stories that are told over many episodes. So I think short films kind of get lost in the mix. I mean, you should be, I mean, it's a great, you know, YouTube's great for, you know, I've got work that I want to show people. And so I can send them a link and there you go. You can watch it there and you can watch it in quite good quality now on YouTube and you've got Vimeo as well. Well, like we do with these things, you know, if people want to yeah, see our work, exactly. they've got access to it, which is great. So we've got a platform to show it. Because we've, we've done the festival run all, as much as we can. And now, you know, because you, I think with festivals, you've got about 18 months You've got a window of about 18 months to, to get that work sort of shown. And then after that, they're, they're sort of looking for the next, you know, lot because there's, you know, lots more short films being made and stuff. So you've got that kind of window to sort of play with. And then after that, you know, if you're not had a big successful festival run, you can put it on YouTube. <laughs> Maybe you can, you know, can have to find success on there. Yeah, I wish I sort of had the answers when people ask about. No, they're 
there there really is not i mean it's it's this weird thing where your fate no. is not in your hands it's it's up it's up to people's it's up to other people's taste as to judge if your film is good or not if it's worth showing to an audience and that's the frustrating bit about filmmaking is that part that control is taken out of your out of your hands it is and all, and also there's you know it, it's about whatever audience it gets um whether you, you know in terms of you know because people ask about furthering career and whatever well i mean that that may that is even an even bigger gamble because it's whether or not the right person happens to be in that audience that it's being screened at anyway <laughs> so you, you know that is that is kind of the challenge nowadays and it's it's just something that that's best not even thought about really i think it's best just to to get the mo- you know get it out there and get it seen because you want to see it with an audience and see an audience's reaction and you know take the rewards from it or or the or the the lessons or the rewards whichever it is you you know, you know from from that basically <laughs> i would say festivals are a somewhat necessary evil if you you know you've not got studio backing you've not got a release date and but at the end of the day, if you get them into the festivals, it's a lot of fun. It's you know, it's great to sort of be there with an audience watching your film, and you, knowing that they wanted to be there to see it as well. Yeah, so, I agree. Well, put it this way: every year, you know, we we talk a lot about Fright Fest because we, you know we go every year and whatever. And every year, I mean, I've I've only been to three, as you know. Um, but every time afterwards, I think, oh God, next year I want to film in the festival and I want to be up there introducing it or, or talking about it afterwards, you know, every year I feel like that. So, I mean, you, you know, you've just got to go for that feeling, I guess. And, uh, um, you, you, you know, um, you know, enjoy the fact that other people can get to see this and, um, uh, you know, and see what their reaction is, I think, I think is, is the key really. And, and not necessarily look to it, having any anything else coming out of it other than that really i i think you know if, if you go in with a plan of oh well this is going to get me the budget for my next film and that's going to lead to this and that's going to lead to that i think you have to have you know a lot of luck and chance in 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 that as well for it to go like that i think you know you just got to just as you do with making films, you've got to do it because you love it and you, because you want to learn and you want to enjoy that process. I think to a certain extent, it's, it's the same with the, with, with, with showing the film afterwards and you, you've got to do it because you want an audience to see it and you want to experience that with an audience and you want to see whether an audience responds to it, whether it be positively or negatively. It's, 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 that's part of the journey, I think, really. That's it, and ultimately, that's what's going to make the film live on. Yeah, and I just sort of say that you know, for every festival darling like Monsters or Sex Lies and Videotape, there are thousands of more films that didn't get picked. So, you know, just you know, you may be the one. You might make that one film that does really well in festivals, and next thing you know, it you're direct, you're, you know, directing Godzilla or some summer blockbuster you don't know I mean, it's but then reality is you know it, it you have to be extremely lucky for that to happen yeah extremely lucky yeah you do but you're right it can be very re- rewarding to uh to to go to a festival and you know see your film screened at a festival and get to talk about your film at a festival that that's massively rewarding that's what keeps us going it, it's fuel for us to keep making these films and keep going because without that you just you know there's no point no absolutely <laughs> you know why are we doing without it? without an audience there's no no audience no film exactly simple as that exactly all right i think that's all we got for, on film festivals yeah 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm sure they'll come back up again at some point because you know we both got feature projects that we're working on and uh as soon as they finish they'll be uh hitting the festival circuit i know i've already been asked you know we'll 
Will modern love be hitting the festival circuit? And yes, it will be. But I have other plans as well. I'm not just relying on just on festivals. So. No, absolutely. And and when we say festival circuit, I think it's very important to point out that you really need to pick and choose the festivals that are right for your particular film. It's about knowing your film and knowing its audience and knowing the correct places for that to be screened. Because to try and blanket do it to everything is is well it's great if you've got that sort of money but you can probably go make another film with the sort of money that you'd spend on, on that because that's that's quite an undertaking it is it is indeed so yes a bit of pre-planning as well know your festivals i mean you know have a look on without a box and i know there's a few other sites which uh, deal with uh, festival submissions and they'll always tell you what they're about and you can gather you know if it's if your film's right for it i mean if it's horror film horror festivals if it's a drama then we'll stick to drama festivals um if it's you know a story concerning uh, gay and lesbians well you know there's a lot of gay and lesbian festivals out there um yeah you, you'll find there's festivals for all kinds of genres sci-fi uh westerns Exactly. And, and budget for it is the thing I would say as well. Definitely yeah. budget yeah. for it because there's nothing more frustrating than if you've put all your time and effort into getting this film made, but then, you know, nobody sees it. You know, what, what what's, what's the point in that? You know, <laughs> so e- e- even it. if it's just a cast and crew screening or something, you, you know, get it, get it projected, get it, get it seen. Um, and, and and you know see if it works see if there's a reaction from it that way because because you as the filmmaker will be way too close to it by the time you've gone through the shooting and editing process to to have a really a you know objective opinion on on whether the you know the piece actually works or not that's a topic for another day indeed i think that's a lot more to do with test screens and stuff but uh yes so Signing off in our usual manner. Keith, how can we find your work? Well, bizarrely, it's on YouTube. <laughs> if you go to <laughs> British Isles, E-Y-L-E-S, and you'll see uh, short films that I've made there uh, for you to be able to view. And you can see my previously f- screened festival films at independentrunnings.com. <laughs> so you can find uh, our podcast on iTunes. You can find it on Mixtape, and you can find it, funnily enough, on YouTube. Yay! <laughs> We're on there too. Uh, also, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, do leave us a review on iTunes uh, so we can just get more people to listen. Good, bad, or indifferent, it's the platform to share. There you go. <laughs> That's it. And tell your friends. Tell everybody. Get them to listen to this podcast. So, thank you for listening, and... uh, Thank you very much. Take care. Bye now.